We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Greetings, brethren. I am Hosanna David. Welcome to today's teaching. Today, I want to talk about how following God's way protects you against your enemies. How following God's way protects you against your enemies. A lot of Christians today believe that they can live their lives the way they want. And so long as they pray, so long as they give their offering, so long as they are close to a prophet, so long as somebody prophesies and speaks into their lives, they will be secured irrespective of the way they live their lives. Psalm 27 verses 11 and 12 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Why is the psalmist saying that lead me in a plain path? Teach me thy way. Because of what? Because of mine enemies. Verse 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty. We know that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses God's children before God. He watches how we live our lives. And when he sees faults, when he sees a lifestyle that is engaged the lifestyle of the kingdom, he accuses us before the Father. He is the accuser of the brethren. The psalmist here says that God teach me your ways. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. If the enemies want to actually assess the lives of believers, they look for loopholes to enter. One of the things that some Christians don't understand is that the believer's life is sealed with God's protection. There is a hedge of protection that God builds around the believer that makes it impossible for the enemy to intrude. This is a hedge of protection that Job, we, we see in the book of Job. Satan said, God, is it not that you build a hedge around Job so that no, nothing, no evil can touch him? So even the devil knew that there was a hedge of protection, there was a wall of protection surrounding Job. What the devil does is that he pushes God's children into sin. And when they, when, they, when they are found with sin, when they stray from the path of God, then he can catch them. God does not tolerate sin. And when those who have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb either uh, ignorantly or through spiritual sleep or deliberately live in sin or plunk themselves in sin and refuse to get up immediately, Satan can strike while the sower slept, the enemy sowed tears. This is what the devil does. He sows evil at the point of sleeping. That is why the Bible says that we should watch and pray all the time. We should always be watchful, not just praying, but we should watch and pray. The devil looks for loopholes and strikes when we are not watchful. One of the ways we watch is by staying righteous, by keeping our garments white. There is something that is called astra right. Astra right. According to uh, a book I read, uh, written by 
Professor I.K. Nathan Uzoma, he says that astral right is something that the enemies holds against you. That in the kingdom of darkness, if they want to strike, they will look for something they will hold against you. And that is what they hold as their right against you. Uh, for instance, there are some people who can do without women. There are some women who can do without men. If, they, if you commit adultery or fornication and paradventure, they get access. They, they have access to your sex fluid. They can use that to torment you for a very long time, if not for the rest of your life. They can even assess your future generation up to the fourth generation. That becomes their right that they hold against you. They, some people believe that they can jump from one woman to the other, from one party to the other, and live their lives the way they want to live and still have God's protection. We know God's protection is there. God loves his children, but we have our own responsibility. That is why I'm doing this teaching. A lot of people, there are too many Christians in troubles. Some can't sleep at night. Some are always troubled. Some are always having problems. And they, are, they spend much of their time fighting witches and wizards, fighting the enemies, but just living your life well, just walking in the way of God alone can bring you a lot of peace, a lot of protection. The psalmist says that, Lord, teach me your way. Why? And lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. But the enemies, they look for something to hold against you. The way you walk, they look for something you have done wrong so that they can hold something against you, astra right against you. And with that, they can torment your life. Remember the doctrine of Balaam. Maybe one day I will do a teaching on, the, on this. The doctrine of Balaam, who taught the children of Israel to commit fornication with the daughters in the land, in the land of Canaan, and also eat things sacrificed to idols. Remember what happened. God killed about 23,000 of them. The same people that Balaam couldn't curse. Balak tried all he could. He couldn't penetrate the people. But when they sinned, there was an entrance. The hedge of protection was broken down. This is what the devil does. He looks for something that can break down the hedge of protection around us so that he can gain access and begin to operate. Moses knew this very, very well. And Moses said in Exodus chapter 33, verse 13, he said, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found faith, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. A lot of Christians today, they know God by his miracles. They know God by signs and wonders. They don't know God's way. They don't know how to walk with God. How many people spend time to read the Bible and know who God is and how to walk with God? A single second can strike a relationship with God. The moment a man gives his life to God, a relationship has started, but it takes the whole of our lifetime here on earth to walk with God. So it's not just about giving your life to Christ. You need to also learn the ways of God and walk with God. There is a lifestyle of the kingdom. There are two main kingdoms in the world, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. And these kingdoms, they have, they have different lifestyles. There is a lifestyle of light, which is the kingdom of God, and the lifestyle of darkness, which is the kingdom of the devil. If you have come to 
the kingdom of Christ, there is a way you live your life. Remember, culture, tradition, lifestyle of every kingdom entails it it touches every aspect of the human life the way they talk the language their belief system their dressing including the way they relate interact with people this is deep some people believe that the kingdom of god is just about religion no it is about how you it's about living the life of the kingdom jesus christ says it is not him who calls me lord lord that we enter the kingdom of god but he who does the will of my father the one who lives the life of the kingdom there are laws that govern this world there are laws that rule this earth a lot of Christians don't make it because they don't live by, they don't observe simple logic. They don't live by simple logics in life. For instance, when you give, as a Christian, you receive. Even if you are an unbeliever, if you give, you will receive. It's a simple rule. Blessed is the hand that gives than the hand that receives it's a simple rule so it doesn't matter whether you are a christian or you are not a christian then also if you work hard and you remember the bible says that we should work with our hands so if you work hard and you apply the principle of prosperity in your business, in your work, in your company, you are going to make it. All things being equal. But if you continue to pray and be in church every day, and you refuse to work hard with your own hands, you will become poor. It's a simple logic. That is why you see that those who don't even believe in Jesus Christ, they work so hard and they make it and some who believe in Jesus Christ they don't believe in hard work they believe that God should rain manna from heaven there are laws that govern this world what you sow is what you reap all religions in this world they believe this law that it is what you sow that you reap if you sow evil, you will reap it. If you sow good, you reap it. So, when you have this understanding that there are laws, there are rules that govern this world, and you live your life according to God's laws, you are going to be protected from a lot of things. Let me tell you something. There are things that the devil can get from your body through illegal means. I mean, when you fall into sin. And then they can use them against you. But if they go to your toilet and get hold of your urine, your feces, they may not have much right. But if you go to somebody's compound or farm, a farmland, and you defecate on the person's farmland, if they get that physics, they will use it against you. And it will work. Why? Because you saw somebody's crops and you decided to pollute the land. You have committed crime against the person. And the person has the evidence. If the person is an occult and they take that excreta to their kingdom, they can use it against you and it will work. But if they go to your toilet and take your excreta to use it against you, it will not work. It could work 
if your spiritual life is low and the potent the potency of the sham or projection is very very high it could work but they don't actually have much right to use it against you so by living your life using your toilet and not using people's farmland or people's backyards people's compounds for your toilet will give you protection even when somebody gets hold of what comes out of you i don't know if somebody is, of, is following what i'm trying to explain there are rules that rule that govern this world and the better for us we are the, the earlier we understand the better for us moses said lord teach me your ways there are different ways many ways in this world proverbs 14 12 says that there is a way that seemeth right unto women but the end thereof are the ways of death there are ways that lead to destruction. There are ways, there is a way that leads to life. And narrow is that way. So by just living your life well and walking on the path of God, on the path of righteousness, you have protection. If you live the life of the kingdom, then the protection of the kingdom is for you. You have access to guidance by angels, angels, ministering, ministering spirits. They will protect you. The psalmist says that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And that is the truth. And by living right, God becomes jealous. He jealously guards you. He guards you jealously and makes sure that no evil comes near your dwelling place. Imagine having an infant. How a mother jealously guards an infant. A little baby that is helpless. That is how God guards you. Like the apple of his eyes. He says, I have engraven you on the palms of my head. Your worlds are ever before me. God will guide you the same way he guides the apple of his eyes. Psalm 5 verse 8 says, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Because of my enemies, lead me in the path of righteousness so that they will not see anything to hold against me. The enemies, they don't sleep. The devil is moving to and fro like a roaring lion. He is seeking for someone to devour. If you walk on the path of righteousness, there is nothing the devil can hold against you. There are people who live in this world who are not pure human beings. There are some people who live in this earth who don't have earthly parents. Some of them are very, very powerful. They can kill, they can destroy, they have enormous powers. But if you are living a, the true life of Christianity, if you live like Christ, if you live a Christ-like life, they will have no power over you. Why? Because they belong to the world of darkness and you belong to the world of light. Remember, the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That is it. They will have no power over you. Let me tell you something. When David sinned against God, there is something that God told 
David through Nathan, the prophet. David said, Oh God, I have sinned. God said, I've forgiven you. You won't die. But you have given a great occasion to the enemy to laugh. He created a loophole. I have forgiven you. But there are consequences. And you have to pay for the consequences of what you have done. Why? Because God is a God of justice. David broke down the walls of protection, the hedge that God built around him. And David paid. David lost his children. He paid. Look at the humiliation he faced. There are consequences for living anyhow life. Let me just tell you, why do you think that Satan likes putting his logos, satanic logos on uh, different brands and try to pollute things in the world? Why do you think so? It, do you think he's doing this for, um, for fun? No. Me as a person, me as a person, there are things I don't use. Not because it is sinful for me to use them. But there are things I avoid because just avoiding them will make my life, my life's journey to be smoother. There are foods I don't eat. Not because it is sinful for me. But by just avoiding them, I have a clearer conscience. For instance, um, I don't take anything produced by Nestle. Nestle products, I don't take anything. Why? Because I know the sign agreement with Sinomix to use aborted fetal cells. Uh, H E K human embryonic kidney cells, which is one of the things they add to their foods. So why should I be consuming aborted fetal cells? Children that were murdered, I avoid their products. I boycott them. Because I know they are going to weaken my life, my spiritual life will drop. Because the devil is a cunning devil. The devil is, remember the serpent is the wisest among all the animals God created in the Garden of Eden. He tries to pollute everything in the world. Satan is not a fool. This is someone who carried out campaign in heaven and he was able to win one third of the stars of heaven. He cast them down, Revelation chapter 12. He, with the, the dragon, cast one third of the stars of heaven down with his tail. These stars are the angels of God. If somebody, someone who carried out politics in heaven and was able to deceive some high-ranking angels, low-ranking angels in heaven where God dwells. If that person is cast down to us and heaven says, Woe to you, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, because Satan the devil has come down to you and that he has great wrath because he knows his time is short. Why do you feel we should live our lives the way we want? Why do you feel that, the, if, that having the arch enemy of God right here on earth with us, we should sleep anyhow, eat anyhow, sleep with women or men anyhow, live our lives anyhow, just because we made a confession a confession about our faith and accepting Christ into our lives some time ago. 
living your life well will put you on the path of righteousness. And that path of righteousness is a path of protection. There are things that will never come across the path of a believer. If that believer lives well, Some people, they talk about God forgives sin, God is merciful. Yes, God is merciful, God forgives sin. But almost all the sins we commit have implication. If you fall into sin, even though God forgives you, it takes you a while to climb back and begin to feel the Holy Spirit inside of you again. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. I believe in practical Christianity. And that's exactly what I teach and preach. There is need for us to be careful. If you fall into the trap of drinking alcohol and you, you got drunk, by the time the alcohol gets off your eyes and you regain your sanity, the anointing in you is going to drop down. Even though God forgive, even though you, you, you pray and God forgives you, the anointing is going to drop down. When you start singing, the anointing is going to, it's not going to flow the way he used to flow before. That's the truth. It will take you a time for you to grow up and grow up and grow up to the point you were before you became drunk. That is the truth. There are implications. And the devil tries to push us into sin. Because he knows when we fall asleep in sin, he can strike. When, remember, Samson's power never left him until the locks of his hair were cut off. We should understand these simple principles. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And so long as the altar, the fire of the altar of the body keeps burning, Satan remains powerless. I ask this question a lot of times. How many of us we allow our child, no matter how brilliant that child is, if that child is six years old, how many of us can allow that child to attend a public school that is a university or a college? Six years old. No matter how brilliant that child is. Because we know that child cannot take care of his or herself at the age of six. So we make sure there are, when the child wants to go to dangerous places, we make sure we guide that child, we make sure we take care of that child very well. But what about when that child grows up to the age of 18, 20, 25? Are we going to follow that child up wherever the child goes? No, because we know that that child is mature enough to take care of themselves. And we send them to the same university where there, are, where there is courtism, where there are bad gangs, where there are prostitutes, where there are gay people, where there are all sorts of people, criminals, drug, uh, drug dealers. We send them there. Because we believe that when we advise them, they will be able to put the, uh, the pieces of advice into practice and take care of, the, of themselves. Because we feel they are old enough to take care of themselves. That is how it is. God drove Satan down to the earth. He cast him down. And he knows that we are old enough to take care of ourselves. So long as we follow his laws, we don't misbehave, he will have no power over us. But look at some people on the street. The same people that were born the same way we were born. Some of them are mad on the street. Some of them have been stricken by the devil. Some of them are maimed and even made less than animals today. Let me ask you a very simple question. 
How many of you have seen a baby of three years old that is mad? I mean, mentally sick, mad. Have you seen a baby three years old that is mad? I haven't seen. I haven't seen five years. Because they know not sin. It's not that Satan doesn't strike at them. He strikes at them. But so long as their hands are clean, so long as they are not up to the age of accountability, God protects them. So if you live your life like a baby, if you live your life like a child, remember what Jesus Christ said, if you must enter the kingdom, you must become like one of these little children. If you live like a little child, who does not know how to plan evil against anybody? God will protect you. The same protection he gives to infants, to children. He gives the same to you too. This is what some people don't understand. A lot of people believe in praying, running to powerful men of God. Let me tell you, every single child of God is powerful. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30, that the lion is the bravest among all animals and it retreats before no one. The Bible also says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Sin is a problem of men. Living your life anyhow will reduce you to a beggar, someone who begs for prayers, who begs for protection. But if you are bold in the Lord and you walk in the ways of the Lord, you mind your steps, you walk in the ways of God, you have protection, you have boldness. But if you give up walking on the path of the Lord, in the way of the Lord, there are lots of loopholes that will be in your life, that the devil can pass through into your life. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 5. It says, Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. That is the truth. Show me one commandment of God that is against nature. Show me one, one, half of God's law, just half or one, that is against nature. That if God says, for instance, don't eat this, and then you abstain from eating it, and then it affects your life negatively. Or he says, do this, and you do it, and it affects your life negatively. I haven't seen anyone. I haven't seen anybody that walks in the path of righteousness and lacks anything. He is like a tree that is planted by the water, that by the rivers of waters. In season, he bears his fruits in every season. That is it. How many of us know this truth? Walk in the way of the Lord. Don't follow the path of the people of this world. It is a path that leads to darkness. The end of it are the ways of death. I want to read this Psalm 1. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Praise God. <laughs> Look at verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is it. Sickness will not attack him when he's supposed to bear fruit. 
because by his stripes you are already healed. Enemies will not break in because the angels of the Lord are there protecting you. I'm not saying that if you give your life to Christ, you are not going to have challenges. Definitely, there are challenges that are common to all men, which you will not be immune to because you put your faith in God. No, if the sun is scorching people, if it is so high, it is going to scorch your skull too. If the rain is beating hard on people and all of you are in the field, it is going to beat hard on you. There are challenges that are common to all men. But when specific attacks come to you, the Lord is going to deliver you from all of them. Praise God. Let us know that there are so many good things that will benefit when we give our lives to God, when we walk in the way of the Lord. Some people think that they are stressing themselves, the way of holiness is the way is too narrow, they can't, they won't be happy again, they won't. Let me tell you something. There is joy in walking in the path of righteousness. If you really accept the Lord and you walk before the Lord, there are things that will never come across your path. The joy of the Lord will always be your strength. I was talking to my boy this evening and I told him that there is so much protection in Christianity. And I told him a story uh, which I, my mom confirmed in his presence, how someone, a classmate, my former classmate, 2015, 2005, how he shot me spiritual arrows. And my palms were scratching me, my, my feet were scratching me. And how God uh, revealed protection to me. I was just, I was so uncomfortable that it was like, Chicken paws. My palms were red. There were spots all over my palms. This thing started immediately. I shook hands with him. And while I was lamenting and um, crying and so uncomfortable, I slept off. And I heard the voice of the Lord told me, Hosanna, take salt, rub over your body. So I got up, I took salt. And my mom was telling me, why are you rubbing salt on your body? Are you not sure this thing is going to aggravate the situation? But because I've heard from the Holy Spirit, I did it. Do you know that that same day, all the things went off. I was telling my boy today, I, said, I told him, I said, a lot of Christians, they beg for protection. They think there is no protection in God. So they put their hands here, they put their legs here, they, are, they, they have, some who have spirit wives and uh, spirit spouses, uh, different kind of things, uh, marine spirits, witchcraft, they don't want to come out because they believe that they will get some protection from there and they get some protection from God. They want to mix everything together. It doesn't work like that. If you are for God, live your life in the hands of God and He will protect it. All you need to do is live well for God. When the devil sends his angels, agents to come and tempt you, run away and flee from sin. That's the whole duty of men. And God will protect you. You can't be sleeping on the lap of Delilah and still wanting God's protection. You will become vulnerable to attacks when satanic agents have access to your body. 
they have access to your soul they have access to your spirit and you are crying and and asking God for protection and the next minute the same lady comes to you and takes things from your body drain your blood directly direct the blood to the kingdom of darkness in the water and you are asking God to protect you it doesn't work like that that is the truth if you are in Christ you need to live the life of Christianity that is the way your protection becomes sure forget about running after false prophets and powerful men of God if you live your life well you too will become powerful our strength is in Christ some of us we pray so hard and get little results why because apart from praying without faith or apart from praying with some level of unbelief which will go a long way to hinder the effectiveness of the prayer your lifestyle matters a lot your lifestyle before you kneel down to pray matters a lot god doesn't listen to the prayer of sinners the devil the demons will always ask that paul i know i know jesus but who are you do you have the seal of god upon you you could put on uniform but if the enemy knows you have no id card that you are not authentic they won't take commands from you but if they see you and they see the seal of god upon your life they see the holy spirit in your life the fire of god burning in you they will flee before you and by the time you resist the devil he cannot stand praise god thank you for watching this message please share it with someone do well to subscribe to Eagle Ayopuna and Hosanna David. Don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Apart from the things we receive, we gain in this world when we walk with God, heaven is our utmost goal. Don't fail to live a holy life if you are not living right. If you are not ready to rapture and be with the Lord, please give your life to Jesus Christ. Time is running out. There is no more time. You can visit our website, hosannadevi.com and eagleayopuna.com. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at bymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.